Good morning everyone, Mrs Alfalfa Sprouts reporting for duty. I have just uh, done my morning workout and I'm actually on a solo walk with the dogs this morning because Ali is off to London for a shoot today which is lovely. Um, I'm listening to a podcast this morning because I think I mentioned yesterday that Carrie had bought some seeds and that she was going to start um, growing her own veg and she'd listened to this podcast and I'm listening to it this morning and it's talking a lot about um, like food supply chains and the issues with importing veg and things like that and produce to the UK and blah 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 and how we can do things better and one of the things that got me thinking that I really really wish we'd done at school because I feel like Correct me if I'm wrong, this might be, I'm sure logistically this wouldn't work, but it might work to a certain degree, is having like kitchen gardens in schools. And maybe there's schools that are already doing this, but kitchen gardens in schools. Come on, body. That all of the kids are in charge of um, essentially cultivating and growing and whatever so maybe one class is in charge of tomatoes and one class is in charge of, of potatoes or it swaps weekly there's like a, a kitchen garden rotor or something like that and each year and each class are taught how to grow their own food um, and that food that the, the school then produces can either go into the canteens so that they're eating better produce thus keeping their costs down because the kids are working for free and um, keeping the costs down the kids are learning are learning incredibly useful skills because I would like now obviously at 34 35 I'm wishing I knew all of the stuff that I'm now learning about growing my own fruit and uh, my own veg and things like that and so that food then goes on either to to feed the the school to a certain extent um, or if that's not feasible or there's restrictions in place or what have you, they can go to the houses of the children that have like free school dinners or something like that. I mean, I don't know if that's the best way to do it because you don't know if they'll actually use the produce and it could end up being wasted or whatever. Whereas the kitchen, the actual canteen at school would most likely put those to good use, I imagine. Um, and just get that education going for children because I'm not gonna lie I did a lot of food technology at school and um, you know I learned how to I learned I don't feel like I actually embraced it but I learned how to make things like Victoria sponges and blah 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 and I really think that that would be such a useful thing for like all if it was like a curriculum like all schools because I feel like and it's probably changed now because it's a long time since I was at school but there definitely needs to be like a life skills that is actually a life skills like I was taught to do like woodwork and things like that and the realities of that is quite difficult but yeah it just got me thinking a lot about how I you know what I think would be really really helpful and yeah but I, I love that this podcast has like got Carrie into doing this as well and I'd like I just I just love it I'm like <laughs> I'm so excited to talk courgettes <laughs> But yeah, I mean, let me know in the comments. I'm sure you'll have more of an insight into the realities or the realisticness of actually doing that. Um, obviously, the vegetables, I'm, I'm sure it's unlikely that schools will have access to greenhouses and things like that, but they do tend to have quite a lot of windowsills. And um, yeah, I don't know. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm thinking on my dog walk this morning. I smelt very faintly this morning the fragrance of springtime and what I mean by that is there is enough blossom and bloom in the air to smell the sweetness of the pollen and the flowers which to me is one of the first it was a very like defining moment for me in like life it sounds really bizarre but like I've probably spoken about it quite a lot but when I got Porter it was obviously January and very very bleak time and it's probably quite bleak today to be honest but um I was really struggling I hadn't really embraced the walks neither had he he really wasn't enjoying the walks and then we kind of turned a corner the day that 
I smelt springtime and for me that was the first time that not that I'd probably smelt it but I'd acknowledged that I'd smelt it like I, it had registered in my brain that there was this existence and this life that maybe I wasn't aware of and I'd been sort of sleeping my way through and uh, this morning it's almost like a celebration for me when I first start getting those hints of of the blossoms and their fragrances sadly it's not a beautiful day it's, it's a quite a bleak day and it, maybe it will um maybe it will brighten up come along chuff snuffs waters on the river are very very high at the moment actually they've gone down a little bit uh, since we last went for a walk well that is a very rosemary oiled up bun um, it is Monday and it is the first day of spring and I am rather fresh faced and oily haired because I was fully going to get ready, ready today and as usual on a Monday I get back from the dog walk and it's just hit the ground running. I kind of wish that there was a way for me to like get an extra hour after the dog walk but it doesn't matter. It's so wonderful even though the sun is not shining, like I can't believe that spring is finally here. It is all up from here. There are buds everywhere. I'm incredibly excited. And I've had the beginnings of my greenhouse sort of being cleaned. So it was, it was cleaned yesterday, last week, sorry. Um, obviously I had the outside done and then all of the glass inside was just done today. Um, I've also had round the back of here, cause that gets really, you can't even see. This usually gets really, really messy down here. So all of that has been cleaned out as well. Um, and then the next phase is a big old spring clean of like the floor, everything's gonna be scrubbed, all of the sides are gonna be scrubbed. And then I think we're sort of ready for springtime fully in here, even though, honestly, I can't wait for more shoots to come up. There's nothing new yet, other than new shoots and the ones that had already come up, but everything. It's just making me want to, oh, it's just making me so excited. And I just can't believe it's the first day of spring. And I've been ordering bits and pieces for um, the house today. I've ordered some new trees for my dressing room and other bits and pieces, but yeah. Happy first day of spring. There is still lots to do in the garden and lots to come to fruition. It is raining. It doesn't really feel like spring, but just the promise of spring being on the way is making me so, so excited. Ali's down in London today and I started off with a very lovely dog walk. Buddy, Barkley, come on, come. Can you see them down the side of the greenhouse? Come on, come on my grumplings. Come on, yay, Buggy! <laughs> Potty a little bit slower than his brother. Come on! The poor of uncertainty. Come on, poor Jean! Good morning, everyone, and happy first day of springtime. I know we obviously started this morning on the dog walk, um, but I just realized, I feel like sometimes I just get up and I'm on autopilot and I just head out the door, and I didn't even realize that I genuinely smelt the first kind of, that sunshine. It's just letting us know it's spring. It's a little brief bit, but um, I can't believe that I smelt the first of the blossoms on the actual first day of springtime. I feel like that is so lucky. I feel very, very like happy about that. Um, I've also been listening to the Almanac. That's book club this sort of, it's probably gonna be more of a year long thing, the Almanac. I feel like I'm gonna listen to each month, like as I'm going into the month rather than um, listening to the book all in one go so it's kind of like a year-long book but yes I'm listening to that at the moment I haven't found another book that I'm really into I actually used up all of my 
um, Audible credits this month because I have not uh, got into the books, which is so frustrating. It's annoying that you can't kind of change the book um, if you don't get into it, but maybe it will um, make me or force me into reading them. However, I wanted to show you this crop top. I feel like this is going to be one of those things that will revolutionise your spring summer wardrobe just as a sort of showcase. I'll show you it with one of my new in shirts that I have not actually steamed yet. Um, but this is a crop top that I found on Amazon. I always feel like I find the best crop top. Do you remember last year? I had the, the halter neck square neck one. Well, I think that this one is going to get a lot more wear than that. So um, this is like a ribbed square neck and square back. So super flattering. It, this can be worn with like with pretty much anything and um, you can pop it with wide leg trousers in summer. It's great as like a layering piece. This will be something that I wear on um, like hikes and things like that. But also for days like today, when obviously I've just done my hair, but I've not done my makeup because I've got to run out for a beauty appointment and um, I need to not have makeup on for that. So I love it for outfits like this when you're going kind of casual. I teamed it with my little Amazon rubber boots as well, but I've, like for throwing over with a shirt, just a super casual look. You can put it with a cardigan. You can obviously like belt this. I know that some people have a really funny thing with um, crotch areas being on show. I don't usually show mine, but I think when you've got a high waisted um, situation and you pop a, a, like a crop top with it, it doesn't look so bad. I think it's when you sort of have, you're like cut off there, I think. Um, but this is so flattering. Ooh. The sun's out again, but this is so flattering and such great material. Most of the time when I buy these kinds of tops, they don't actually fit me, but this is like a second skin and the perfect neckline. It also makes me very happy that it is pretty much, I think it's almost like a year to the day that I had my surgery. And I actually can't believe how different like my body feels and is now like a whole year on. It's kind of a weird one, isn't it? Because it's so, it's, it's such, I feel like I've been on such a sort of journey with it. It's really bizarre. Yeah, like for my chair. But yeah, I've been meaning to talk to you about this for such a long time because I've obviously been like getting used to my body after 10 years um, of it feeling like odd. And I always say that, and I feel like I need to preface this and say when I obviously had my first surgery, if you don't know, I had um, breast augmentation when I was like, I think I was like 24 or 23. And um, it wasn't exactly what I wanted, but because I was just kind of happy that they were bigger, I don't think I truly like made peace with my body about it. And they were too sort of, I, I feel like they were too artificial looking than what I asked for. And um, they were very sort of round. And the one thing that I didn't realize is that my actual like, these bits like pointed down, they now like have this nice like ooh, perky shape to them. Um, but because the, the implant was so big that it was sort of like pointing down, it really wasn't what I wanted at all. And I always felt like there was this like juxtaposition between my body and who I actually felt like who I am, which is a bizarre place to exist in all honesty. Um, I often felt like my body was a lot sexier than I ever actually felt like I was. And over the last year, I think that I've really like, first of all, I feel so differently about my body and I hope that you'll like walk with me here, but it's taken me a while to realize and you might have noticed that I don't like, I'm not in my underwear so much on like my TikToks or reels or even, I mean, sometimes on here because it's very, very personal on here. Like you come with me on day to day life. So sometimes I show you in like bikinis and stuff, but generally I'm not like showing on my TikTok and that's not because, and by the way, this is like, however you feel empowered. Like if you feel empowered showing everything, like I am literally like, hell yes. Um, for me, it was a weird journey because I was like, I feel like I'm doing this and I don't know why I'm doing it. And it definitely doesn't make me feel the way that I think it makes me feel. And so then once my body felt more in synergy with like who I am as a person, I've almost become more protective over my body and I'm not necessarily like, 
I don't know, I don't, I don't feel comfortable showing bits and pieces of my, my body in that way anymore. It's almost like it's something just, I don't know, for me, I feel so much more comfortable and so much more sure and feel, I don't feel like I'm like caught in this limbo between what my body looks like. And this is probably riddled with personal misconceptions, preconceptions, all of those things. But my, I just, I felt like I was like a person in a body that didn't really represent them. And whenever I was in a bikini, it always feel, felt very like, I almost wanted to, to be like, oh, this isn't what I wanted, and like apologize to people, which is obviously ridiculous. And um, yeah, so I, over the last year, I've really changed how I feel. And I, I feel like my confidence and my, my like, I don't know, like the strength of who I am and who, who I know I am has really like cemented itself. Sorry about this lighting. This is spring lighting in a nutshell. But yeah, so anyway, this this is like my dream. Like the fact that my body looks like this in this tank top is just like, I, this is all I could have hoped for. Like they're not like small or whatever and like they're still there and they've got a bit of volume to them. But in reality, I'm like, I just feel so much happier and I know that so many of you have gone on to use the same surgeon as, as me and I honestly I think he's incredible he was so nice and just so like just so easy going but personable and caring and like even the nurses they all just had such good things to say about him and it was expensive and I could have been like oh gosh you know I I can get it cheaper elsewhere, but I just don't know if I have been as happy as I am with how I look. Um, sorry that this tank top has basically prompted this very personal conversation, but yeah, I, I think it's something I've wanted to talk about for a while and like, I often get people saying to me now, and I know I've spoken about this a lot in the, um, I don't know why I'm getting emotional. <laughs> what is wrong with me? Lydia, you are so weird, like why <laughs> get emotional? And if you're not getting emotional over your seeds, you're getting emotional over your boobs. Like, honestly, what is wrong with you? But I think it's just, I'm so glad that I did it. And I feel so much happier that I've done it. And I feel like there's been a lot of comments over the last year about, you know, how I dress like an old woman and I dress like this and I dress like that. And it's, I think it just comes from, I don't know, the comfort that I feel in myself and how like, I feel like my body literally is as elegant as the clothes that, that I wear now. And I feel so much more comfortable and empowered in elegant clothing. And as usual, like, as I just said, however you feel empowered, I just want you to feel empowered, whether that's elegant dressing or whether that's literally butt naked, like genuinely do whatever makes you feel the sexiest, the most wonderful, but for me, it really is like dressing in a way that I feel, I'm, I'm just, I feel so, like I walk taller. And this is me saying this and I'm in leggings and a tank top, but genuinely I do, I feel like I walk taller. I feel like I stand taller. I feel like a completely different human being. And it's been such an amazing process to know. And I, I know that there's a lot of things that, um, people say about surgery and I feel like I'm kind of on the fence because if I left my, 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 my body alone, I probably would have got to this age and been really happy with the chest that I had. And so that's something that I do have to consider, but I didn't. And I think I would have always not known and I would have resented the fact that I didn't. So I think it was always inevitable. It's a shame I had to have it done twice and it wasn't done exactly how I wanted it the first time, but hindsight is a wonderful thing and i'm really happy for the journey of me learning so much about my body like i think that that's the biggest thing is that i've learned so much about me and all of the things that i really really like and that make me feel my best and yeah it's dressing like an old woman apparently but i love it <laughs> i honestly love it so yeah anyway i'll link this tank top in the description box down below i've also teamed it with my my boots which are surgically attached to my feet at the moment it's obviously still cold, um, so I'm I'm not going out like this. This will be very much like a a spring 
um, workout outfit, but also, like I said, this with some high-waisted palazzo trousers with a shirt bellowing behind. Like, if you can get a matching two-piece, like, I've got the most beautiful two-piece coming as well. I've got a few items to show you from Amazon and um, a few bits that I really, really love, but there's so many good things that I've ordered and haven't arrived yet. And I'm always on the fence as to whether to show you before they've arrived, um, but I'm gonna link them in the description box anyway, just in case you fancy them. Like one is this orange two piece, which I'm so hoping that this is gonna be amazing because if it is, it's like orange, I feel is like my color this, this spring, summer. I love it. Anyway, I need to crack on. Um, oh, that was what I was gonna do with you. Happy first day of springtime. The bluebells are almost out. So I think, do I add my bluebell necklace to my stack or do I? both because they're kind of different colors oh i feel like i want this one on that is the shortest setting and i love it i love it i love it i love it well there is one thing i can tell you for free that the weather today is like the perfect spring day there is a little bit of rain coming through but then these beautiful bright bursts of sunshine and i have just signed on something truly truly exciting and I can't say any more than that but I could cry I could literally I mean I cry all the time so that doesn't mean anything but I could cry so this I I, I was talking to someone earlier and I was explaining to them how I feel joy and I think I feel joy so much that it makes me want to cry. Like, and do you, I always talk about this, but you remember when I thought I wouldn't find my joy again. And it's just, oh, I think it's this season. I think it's seeing all of the shoots coming up. I know I'm such a cringe fest, but seeing all of the shoots and all of the little things um, coming back to life, I'm just so excited. Well, the sun has gone in, but I'm back home now and I am very excited to see the first lilies of the valley coming out on the dining room table, little tablescape. We're also attempting to grow a, an artichoke tree for Ken. So he's given us his seed and we are gonna give it our best shot. So he's given us that job, which is very kind of him. I have also had some new seeds arrive. So I've got some mixed gourds, which I think will be very interesting to grow and a little bit um, a little bit textured for next autumn. Um, then we've got some crown prints. I loved growing those. I want to grow more of those this year because they store so well and they taste delicious. Um, I've got some cucumber and I've also got the money maker tomatoes that I grew last year because they did really well. Um, also some more carrots. And then these came in my um, they came in my high grove crackers at Christmas. And these are actually pea shoots. And one of the things that I saw when I was at uh, Keythorpe Hall was that they had um, little window boxes inside of pea shoots and they used them to put them onto um, like uh, dishes. In fact, tonight I might make a pea risotto. I don't have any pea shoots. Damn it, maybe I'll wait. Because they just looked so like wild and beautiful. So um, yeah, I'm gonna grow those as well. And I've ordered some little aged terracotta troughs from Amazon as well. I'll link all of the seeds and the little troughs in the description box down below. Um, but yeah, I thought that, that was a really cute idea. I saw them growing on the side and I was like, why have they got so many pea shoots growing on the windowsill? And then I realized that they were using them as decoration, which I thought was lovely. I've just been downstairs researching chickens or runner ducks. I think Ali wants runner ducks. And it's actually looking like runner ducks might be better than chickens. If you have runner ducks or you have chickens, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, but also any tips as well, because yeah, we're at that point where we need to sort of start making some solid research and plans in order to get them. And I know that Ali was very much like, I want, I kind of like the idea of runner ducks and you get big green eggs from uh, runner ducks and apparently they're a bit more low maintenance. Um, 
I'm just envisioning them walking into the kitchen from the patio and it just, oh. Anyway, I was gonna sit down there and get lost in the world of runner ducks or chickens, um, but I thought I'd show you some of the dresses that have arrived super quickly just so that I can link them down below because I'm so, so impressed with this one. For the first time ever, it actually fits on my waist. Like usually dresses arrive and they don't fit. Now there's a few little threads and things that you need to to unpick and I feel like it looks shinier on camera it's not actually that shiny and this with like some cute sandals I love the cuffs on this the shoulders have a beautiful structure as well so I'll link this in the description box it comes in other colors obviously I just went for green because I'm I'm basic like that but um yeah I love the skirt good amount of fabric super cute could pop it with I love pink and green I'm not like a huge pink wearer but pink and green if you want to add like a touch of pink i think that always looks really really lovely um cute little sort of baby pink lipstick or something like that gorgeous okay this white dress from amazon just arrived and i was waiting for it to arrive so apologies i've actually got all of my makeup done now so i can't even like hide this in there but i wanted to show you this because i think it's a real classic i love the broidery detail it's like it's quite modern this particular detail sometimes it can be a little bit like your grandma's curtains um, whereas this one feels really nice and modern which i love and then of course these ruffles are subtle but still impactful and the perfect piece to style with the usual accessories that we all know and love. Um, this is also the perfect opportunity for me to tell you about the Amazon Spring Sale where basically from the 27th of March to the 29th you're going to be able to make a saving of up to like 30% on small businesses because there's lots of amazing small businesses that even I discover through Amazon. I feel like that's something that isn't like talked about enough. There's so many amazing small businesses on there but there's also bigger brands as well. So you're gonna be able to take full advantage of the 30% off from the 27th to the 29th. I'll pop all of the details in the description box down below, but that's the spring sale that's gonna be happening. And I think you probably will be able to get some really lovely things as well, whether that's some bits to decorate your home for the coming season, because obviously it's springtime now, but also anything that you see in this haul, um, you can maybe add it to your basket. If you're not worried about missing out on it, because I know that people get very cross with me when things sell out, um, but yeah, I'll pop all of the details down below. This dress is a favorite at this time of year. My wardrobe is open because I've just picked out the other colors that I've got in this. Um, This dress is like my ethereal Pinterest dream dress. This is the most perfect dress for pottering in your house, in the garden, in a beautiful dress that doesn't cost the earth. So you don't mind if you get a little bit of mud or a little bit of cake mixture on it because it'll wash out and the dress is not like um, over the top expensive. It's actually based off of a dress that I think was initially on, um, free people so it's got that kind of boho bo boho vibes to it but this season it's had a bit of an upgrade and it's got these little um ruffles here now i've got this in the green i've got it in like a burnt orange but i wanted it in the classic white i've also got it in like a um like a biscuity color as well like a taupe but i do love a classic white dress at this time of year and it, this is just perfect for me because it's like i get it i get up i put it on it is so comfortable like the smocking isn't too tight but yet still is really flattering it's elegant as well so when i'm like working around the house or if someone knocks at the door i'm not embarrassed but i feel super comfortable and i can just get everything done when i'm wearing this dress and it even doesn't look out of place with my no makeup face like a fresh face is not the end of the world when you're wearing this dress it is perfect and there is so much fabric in the dress this with a straw hat oh my gosh it'll see you through the next season beautifully flat shoes you can wear it with um, sandals you can wear it with little heels I really love tan accessories with this as well because it's obviously pure white but also the neckline is this beautiful square neckline and you can obviously wear it off shoulder as well if you want to get a little bit of pink on your shoulder a little bit of color it is gorgeous this is my one 
from last year that I've taken out of um, my cupboard, which is actually almost a little bit bluer than my dressing room colour. Um, and then I also have this version in the sort of off-white biscuit colour as well. But with this dress in particular, I don't think that you will be disappointed. I think it's one of those like heroes, like the shirt dress that I found a few years ago that um, you just wear and wear and wear, especially at this time of year, because you've still got your shoulders covered. Um, if it does get like a little bit chillier, um, you've still got that sort of double layer to the skirt, but it's still nice and breathable, perfect for gardening, perfect for sowing seeds, perfect for baking, perfect for popping to the garden centre, all of those things. I literally, can you tell I'm excited? I'm literally living my best spring summer Lydia life at the moment. <laughs> So I mean the first day. I actually haven't steamed this, but I thought that I would pop it on just so that you can see um, that this is the one that I got last year. It's still very much in my wardrobe because they're super easy to wear. This one's actually tighter on here, and I think the new one is a bit more comfortable. But if you don't want to go for white, this would make a really lovely, I know I always say it, but wedding dress or garden party dress, what have you, but it is such a beautiful spring dress. So I thought I'd show you this in this color and the white as well. And I'll pop the biscuit in, um, in the links. And this is the final dress in this beautiful shade of muddy green. Um, I have popped a little spare bow on. It's a little bit browner, but I think I can get away with it just so that it creates that shape. I love having dresses like this on at this time of year where I can add these sort of sash belts. I think you can find sash belts on Amazon as well, but this is such a gorgeous shape. I'm actually gonna pop the other white dress back on because I was so comfortable in it and it's feeling so spring-like today that I actually simply can't waft around my house in a, in a dress. That's my favorite thing to do and I'm gonna do it. Ta-da! <laughs> it has actually been a lovely day to be makeup free. I'm actually glad that I didn't waste the time this morning getting makeup on my face and I've just spent the day pottering around the house. I thought, I can't actually remember, did I take you outside to show you what I got up to? But before the sun sets and Ali gets home, I thought we could potter outside. Well, just take a quick trip outside to the greenhouse and I can show you what I got up to. Um, these are my new rhubarb horses that we picked up from Burford. Also, funny story, we left an entire bag of stuff at Burford. So um, I bought these beautiful little fern, um, like, goblets and we left them there and we left it along with our sourdough. So Ali is currently on his way back from Soho Farmhouse and um, he's bought another sourdough. We also bought some smoked garlic, forgot that as well. Um, but anyway, I thought I would show you the happenings in the greenhouse. So these are a little gift from my next door neighbor. These are a climber. I don't actually know what they are. Ali's gonna tell me. Um, then we've got sweet peas. So these are the sweet peas that you saw that I um, obviously uh, sprouted on my windowsill. Um, I bought these, these are some shallots. Lumi has joined me. Um, we, yes, I think because we don't use huge amounts of onions, I'm not a huge lover of onions, more just for flavor. Shallots are better suited, so I thought I'd try, try and um, organize growing my own, but this one seems to want to rub herself against all of my plants. Little strange cat. Um, but yes, all of these are coming up really, really nicely. And obviously these pea shoots are looking lovely, but these are monge too. I've ordered all of my agri frames as well. So hopefully they will be arriving. But Lummy, I think we should go indoors. My herb boxes though are really doing well. And all of the little um, tulips that I planted are just, oh, it's gonna look so pretty when they're all up. Come on, Lumi, out of there, please. Come on, come on. Good girl. Sorry, I am midway through some malt sourdough that Ali has brought back from Soho Farmhouse and it is bedtime for the sausage dogs and it's so funny. I need to let Barkley in, but Porter just came in and because I was waiting for Barkley, I didn't do the usual routine of walking them through the house and Porter looked at me like, what are you doing? We need to go in the bedroom, mum. Why are you sitting there? Get up in the bedroom. And now it's Barkley's turn, in you come. Oh, mommy, very wet out there. Come on, in you go. You're allowed to come in. Come on. Good boy. He knows to wait for his mummy. 
Good boy. In you go. Here you go, Barky. Yes. Playtime. I do think that that's my favorite thing, the fact that they've so quickly adopted this new routine as a routine, so that now, like, when I don't do what I normally do, they, like, look at me like, mum, what is wrong with you? Also, I'm looking quite pink in the face because I've been using a new retinol and um, lots of new stuff on my skin, and so I'm a little bit pink, but shows that it's working. Of course, when the boys are in bed, I am also ready for bed. These are the blush pajamas. Um, that are hands down the world's most comfortable and when they're ironed most comfortable and most beautiful they're classic piped pajamas collared these are capri ones and short sleeves so these are good for sort of the spring summer season they come in literally every color i will link all of the different colorways in the description box down below i have them in basically the sage green and this beautiful blush color it's like an oatmeal-y blush it's beautiful i'll actually show you it in better light when i um, go downstairs but Ali got home and brought my new summer jacket from Seuster and Hicks as well and um, I thought I'd show you it quickly it's basically based well it's identical to the jacket that I got um, before Christmas which was like my Celine inspired and I wanted to do the summer edition this is how quickly it's arrived because you would have watched me choosing the fabrics um, we went for this beautiful, beautiful fabric. Um, and what I loved about it is the fact that it looked like linen, but no, sorry, it looked like a boucle kind of um, woven fabric, but actually it's incredibly lightweight. So it's still got that beautiful texture to it. If you look up close, the fabric of this is like nothing else i went for an ivory silk lining as well just for that really classic feel this is the suster and hicks made to measure black label um and with the same gold buttons with the fleur-de-lis that i did on my celine one let me i call it celine it's not celine but um basically exactly the same silhouette but this is like my autumn winter and this is my spring summer. It's a slightly um, lighter blue because obviously I've got my navy blue suit that I've got from Seuster and Hicks as well. But this is um, a bit more like vibrant in its colour. And one thing you'll notice is that I am talking to you about some affordable pyjamas, some affordable dresses. And then I'm speaking to you about some like higher end pieces. And I know that there'll be people watching this thinking, yes, Lydia, we know it's just savvy to to um search out the bargains but then invest in those more like um classic pieces that is the epicenter and ethos of my style um i will always search for like good value for money and um i love getting something for a good price but i also am not afraid to spend money on something when i know that it's going to be an asset to my wardrobe, which for me, dressing well, is the highest form of good manners, um, but also it's something that I enjoy, it's like an art form, not that I'm saying that I'm an artist, but I love putting together outfits, it's something that I really enjoy, and um, I feel like I say a lot about myself with my outfits, and so being savvy with them is really important, it's why it's something that I've changed quite a lot, and I know I talk about change all the time, um, but I'm an ever-evolving human, and I learn so much every year about my style and these jackets are just timeless, elegant, the perfect addition for throwing over your shoulders or over a little tank top. In fact, this would look, I'm gonna try this on tomorrow with my new cami and some trousers. Yes, I'm gonna do the ultimate high, low, like haul in this because this is a much more expensive piece um, than the other things that I've been showing you, but I will show you how they go together perfectly. That is my challenge for tomorrow. I'm going to get into bed now though and um, kiss some schnoots and rub on some magnesium because I want to have a good night's sleep. Good morning everyone. It is Wednesday and I thought it was Thursday this morning, so um, I was sat there maybe laying in a little bit longer than I should have done when my doorbell rang and it was my PT. And I was like, hmm, I'm still in bed, <laughs> awkward. But um, thankfully he's very understanding and that does not happen often. And I ran upstairs and I was ready in a short amount of time. Um, 
Are my sausages ready for breakfast club? Are you ready for breakfast club? Are you ready for your breakfast club? You look at me like, shut up mother, we're trying to sleep. More puppies, more puppies. <laughs> Lovely puppy. Are you ready for breakfast club? Are you ready for breakfast club? You're not going for a dog walk today. Because you've already had two walks, now we need to give you a little bit of a rest. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh. Pardon? You ready for breakfast club? Are you ready for breakfast club? On the menu to... Oh, downward doggy dog? A little bit of cobra this morning, maybe? A little bit of cobra. You think mummy's got something for you. Well, mummy has breakfast. 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 Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah. On the menu today, we have some bar, yes, we have some brilliant lamb, a healthy meal with an extra nutrition boost. Do we have enough for two sausage shops? We absolutely do not. So, we will be combining that with some lip licking chicken with beef. How does that sound? How does that sound? The pour of uncertainty? Okay. I'm not sure if anyone's ever seen these. I have shown them on my channel before, but we ordered these from a local ceramicist and um, it's called Whistle and Woof. And I think they're on Etsy and um, she personalizes bowls. So we've got a Barclay and a Porter and um, a water as well. Okay, right. Barclay always gets a little bit more than Porter because Barclay is bigger than Porter. So. When the moon hits the sky like a big pizza pie. There we go, sausage dolls. You're not eating today, no? You don't fancy it. You're on a diet, are you? You're not getting anything else. Come on. You're an ice cream. Good boy. And now he's decided he's eating it. Right, I'm partially dressed, but I wanted to do one of these thingy jigs with you again. And I know I mentioned last night that I was going to try on my new jacket and I thought it's a perfect opportunity for me to do a little bit of a style. I've got the window open, the birds are going wild. It's sunny. It's so weird. At the moment, the um, weather app is saying that we've got like 100 days of rain ahead of us. But yesterday it was sunny, little spatterings of rain, but today it's been sunny with little spatterings of rain as well. So I'm kind of thinking, first of all, this is the best weather for the garden, but second of all, um, I'm just happy there's sunshine. So anyway, um, this is a shirt dress that I bought last year, and you know that I wear this huge amount. I've got it in the black and I've got it in the, 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 the blue and the white. Um, I love it because it's ankle length. It's one of those items that I don't mind again getting like a little bit ruined or whatever I often in spring summer if I'm traveling this is what I'll wear because it's comfortable it doesn't crease and it looks really really smart this is like I've always said this is like my equivalent of a um, tracksuit in spring summer and I think the quality is really great it's not the highest uh, in terms of fabric like quality but it is it looks really good. It's exactly what I need. And sometimes not necessarily, like I obviously favor natural materials, anything that's really organic and things like that. But sometimes um, in order to get those price points down, it is something that is um, sometimes like compromised. However, I've just been sat thinking about this all morning. I really feel like things are about to change in the fashion world in terms of like the fast fashion side of luxury and also the normalcy of like high-low. I feel like it's a really bizarre thing whenever someone comments like she's wearing Hermes but also wearing Amazon. For me, I feel like that's just, it, it's just, I mean, it's just 
a good idea. If you can find something that you love and wear and wear and wear, and you've seen how much I wear this, why would you just spend loads more for the sake of spending loads more? Obviously, there are a number of things to factor in, but if you are able to, to save costs at this time, it works really well for me. Anyway, another thing that I wanted to show you, and I think I showed you this last year, two bags are like my summer hold all bags of choice, but they're also, if I wasn't able to like have my Hermes bags, I think that this would be the only summer bag that I used. Being completely honest, I would buy myself a vintage Hermes scarf. I would wrap it around, whether it's a twilly or whether it's a big scarf. I think this one can probably take a really big scarf. Or you could even do one of your Holland Cooper scarves as well, depending on your budget. I mean, vintage scarves and Holland Cooper scarves, they're not hugely, there's not a huge amount of difference. You can pick um, some really good scarves up for um, a good amount of money and um, for, for a good sort of price, I think. So if you wanted to like integrate a, a part of the Hermes identity, I always find that this is a really great way. So I thought that I would style this up with my new jacket, <laughs> um, but also show you how I would um, style these two items up as well. Now, whenever I go to Soho Farmhouse, wherever I go to the beach, I actually pick these over my Celine tote. I know lots of you love my Celine tote, but it's got big Celine on the front, it, the front of it. It's not very quite luxury. I generally go for these, and this is so, so comfortable to use because it looks so chic. These are crafted um, in Provence. These are Provence market bags. These are never going out of style, and I feel like they are so beautiful with like white dresses. This is almost like my staple hold or bag at this time of year. Um, obviously you can go for this one. I love that they've got the tan accessories as well, like the tan um, details, which goes really nice. This one actually like, um, the more oils that you get on it, it's kind of almost like a Louis Vuitton bag. It um, patterns up, same as this one, beautiful, beautiful quality. So I'm gonna grab some scarves and the belt. This beautiful Holland Cooper one is a great option as well. I actually really, really like the style of this belt. And it is the perfect width for this dress. So if you're in the market for a, a belt like that, pop some little tan ballet flats on. And I've got this vintage pleated Hermes scarf in this kind of orangey color. So if I was going to Style it up, little touch of Hermes like this, just to add that detail. So holding it with these two straps, I always find that works better like that. You've instantly got a pop of colour, but it's really exceptional um, tones that add something. There's a little bit of jewel tones in there. There's this orange that I'm loving at the moment. So it adds a bit of intrigue to the clas classic accessories, like so, which I think works beautifully. But if I was gonna wear it with my new jacket, just to style it up a bit differently, the birds are singing, actually drowning me out. To style it up in my sort of usual way, I could go LK Bennett striped flats that I have from last year. And, oh my God, it's so gorgeous. This is a catch -a poly fabric. It is a linen, silk, and wool blend. So hence why it's got that texture while still being super, super lightweight. Um, the sun is killing me because I've got my window open. I'll pop it on normally as well. Oh, and the thing is, is this is actually a little bit different um, in terms of like a crop jacket because we have put this really beautiful like peplum. It's not, it's not a peplum, but it's got sort of like a shape to it. Rather than it being so boxy, it's really beautiful and elegant. And I just love it. So then with this basket, I could of course add a navy blue twilly. These are 130 pounds um, from Hermes and they are expensive for a little strip of silk. But if you are wanting to add a little detail of Hermes to something like this, I think it is such a great option. And that, for me, is how I do it. I absolutely love this. Oh my gosh, the jacket is so gorgeous. I am in love. Just to show you it. I 
thought I would show you it done up just so that you can see the shape of it because I feel like it's got like a almost like vintage um, Dior kind of vibe to it. I'll link all of the bits and the basket bags because the basket bags are a um, really beautiful brand that I discovered on Amazon. It's an uh, independent brand and that's one thing that I really like is discovering those independent brands on Amazon. Um, and she's just fantastic. She always sends me her basket bags and so I love being able to feature them. And that's definitely my favorite one, the one with the two handles. I really want her to make this bag <laughs> in a size like this, like with beautiful leather detailing, this little cute basket bag would be the best summer bag. This is not um, available on Amazon. I don't know where this is from, but it's got my name on it. And uh, yeah, I'd love to see that in the smaller size so that it's almost like a little cute summer crossbody bag. But yes, anyway, those are the details. The other thing that's arrived this morning from Amazon is <laughs> Mr. Millen Gordon's Brussels sprouts. Yes, he wanted to have Brussels sprouts this Christmas. So I actually ordered some little plugs um, of because I didn't have any seeds. And I thought, you know what, these ones I've never grown before. So I, I thought I'd get myself some plugs and give them a go. So I'm going to take those out to the greenhouse and give everything a water out there. These also arrived for me. These are from Wild Nutrition and these are some vitamin... Oh, that is my tummy rumbling. <laughs> Apologies. Um, but these are some vitamin D gummies. I've just had some of them. You actually have to have three, which is basically a packet of sweets, which I love. But these are food grown. I'm very, very intrigued by these. As someone that works from home, especially over like autumn, winter, um, sometimes, other than my dog walks, getting outside is something that I don't do enough of when it's in the depths of winter. And um, vitamin D can sometimes really, really help with just feeling good in general. So yes, they've sent me two packets and I've opened the other one and um, they taste really nice. I'm glad that they're food grown because that, that is something that I worry about, obviously taking supplements, etc. I worry what's in them, but these are no artificial colors or sugars, no gelatin, no GMO, no live yeast at time of manufacture, plastic uh, packaging free and suitable for vegetarians. You thought we were done, we were not, because I just held these two next to each other and I just thought how gorgeous they look together because this has blue in it. Uh, this is actually from Parisian Sweet, by the way. Um, but yes, this would look so cute in my hair. I'm going to try it. Hold on, let's put, my, put this in my hair. Obviously, this is completely not the final styling. It's going to fall out because I haven't secured it properly. But I love that. <laughs> it looks ridiculous, but you can see how the tones work really well. This is very colourful for me, um, and exactly why I would then go with like tan accessories for something like this. I wouldn't go with the striped shoes for example, um, but no, I love that, absolutely love it. I have to just show you that, sorry, I'm yammering on about fashion today and I know I am, um, but yeah, I think it's just one of those things where I'm like, it's so lovely finding that I have this love of old, like vintage pieces, but also like finding really timeless pieces, but also finding affordable pieces. So I feel like I found a bit of a happy medium um, with my style, which is lovely. And it's lovely because, um, I found this video on TikTok not long ago and it was a really well um, articulated point by this creator about um, this industry being almost like a battle that you physically cannot win or like you literally cannot win because um, obviously if you speak about high-end pieces which I obviously sometimes speak about them more than I do lower-end pieces you're considered out of touch unrelatable and things like that but then when you work when you talk about affordable pieces like um, more high street pieces you're you know spoken about in terms of um, damaging the environment and um, that kind of thing. And then when you speak about environmental issues, then anytime you don't um, do things perfectly, say you need water and you end up having to buy a plastic bottle of water, you then are um, called a fraud. And there's all of these really sort of difficult spaces that you have to exist in this creator space. And I'm just like most people trying to always do my best with this. And I definitely feel like A, those kind of narratives and discussions have made me be better because I used to only shop at places like ASOS and, and things like that, and now I don't. Um, I think I found a really happy space between 
investing in items like my new jacket, um, which by the way, I've not paid for this one. Most of my stuff from Susie and Hicks I pay for, um, but I was very, very lucky to be gifted the fabric from Cacciapoli, which is a family owned business in Napoli. And um, they did the same with my last jacket in giving me the fabric for that as well in order to make these pieces. I'll link to Susan and Hicks if you want to order the same jacket because I think that a lot of you are going to want to do that. It's made to order, um, but it's worth it. Uh, but yes, and so I'm obviously, I'm finding my happy space between these more affordable staple, staple pieces, but then those items that are worth investing more money in because I enjoy the craftsman, the craftsmanship, the fabrics, the history, exactly like Hermes or the, the wicker baskets and the French market, uh, market bags. But then also buying pre-loved, I think buying pre-loved will always be the best option. Um, but I would say that in countering that, I don't want to lose my own personal style in the process. So wherever I can now, I do check pre-loved, which is something that I haven't done before. And it's made me a better person. It's made me a better influencer, I think. Um, and it's made me feel like I'm able to connect a little bit more with you. The one thing that I will always try and do is find you different options um, in terms of like, obviously I buy the Hermes belt because I can, but if I couldn't buy the Hermes belt, I'd probably buy the Ralph Lauren, those kinds of things because it's still the sentiment remains the same. I like the tan accessories and I think they complement the most outfits. And so it's kind of within whatever your budget is. Anyway, I'm rambling on, but I guess that's my weird way of saying thank you because you have helped me become a better consumer. And whilst sometimes it can feel like I'm chasing, um, appeasing the people that obviously follow me and hitting every mark, which I know I will never do, I definitely feel like it's made me better and you've helped me improve and you've helped me grow and in more ways than one so I'm, I am grateful and that's just my little thank you to you because I know that obviously sometimes it's quite difficult it can feel like it can be quite a negative space online um, and if you're able to sort of sift through and find the the nuggets of information that are constructive and helpful it can help so yeah that's what I'm saying I also think it's happened in many different areas of me being online in terms of like I I definitely feel like I'm a kinder person now and I'm a more considerate person than I was and I I thought I was a pretty kind person before but I'm definitely more kind um because my mission has been to not let the world make me mean because the world is mean like it's quite a difficult world that we live in nowadays but I've I've made sure that it's made me a better person like even today when I didn't get out for my PT I think you know past me would have probably just thought oh it's okay no like it was an accident no no harm done but instead I've messaged him and I said I just want to apologize for not being ready when you arrived I don't want you to think that I don't value your time or these sessions and he's probably going to think you all right Lydia you okay a bit weird but it means a lot to me that he knows that I'm not taking the opportunities that I have to have a PT come to my house at 6 30 and not appreciate it so yeah I'm a better person and I love that. <laughs> well, I've just bought my Brussels sprout plugs out here. I'm gonna give them a good water. I don't know if I told you about these already, but these are a gift from my next door neighbor. Um, she says it's a cup and saucer plant, which um, is a self climbing, um, and it has apparently big purple flowers. Ali saw it last year and um, he, he mentioned how beautiful it was. And so she's gifted us some this year. Um, so I'm looking forward to planting those somewhere. Apparently they grow very quick, but it is an annual, so um, it won't obviously come back um, every year. But it is just looking so lovely and green in here. Even these are coming back to life after me saving them from Burford. Although Burford looks after their plants very well, but they were just looking a little bit sad. So I'm gonna give everything its usual drink out here. Well, I have just finished up a hour and a half meeting and I had verbal diarrhea in that meeting. It was with my life coach. And honestly, it was, it's uh, one of those like ones where I was like, I'm really sorry. I'm talking so much in this. Usually I do a lot of listening as well, a lot of learning, but this one I was like, nah, 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 nah. Um, but I finished now and it's five o'clock. The sun is still shining, albeit over the house now at this point. And I've come upstairs to some orders from Amazon. And one of these I have been so excited for it to arrive because I'm going to use this so much you actually have no idea um this is so basically you would have seen that I um I thought I'd just quickly open them with you before I end the video because I appreciate I've been yabbering on and touching my hair so much <laughs> this is 
entire video that you're probably sick of me now. But yeah, I thought I'd just get into these just to show you the bits that I've got because I germinated the seeds on my windowsill and there is actually like proper germinators that you can get. And I think that I'm probably gonna do that moving forward. Um, it's not for you, my love. It is not for you. Would you like to see it? He's down here with his little... <laughs> he like jumps up. It's not for you, my love. I'm sorry. There's no teddy in it. Oh, you're very upset. Little stress yawn because you thought that there was a teddy for you. <laughs> this little boy loves Amazon parcels more than his mummy. Oh. Oh. Literally, when I went down to pick him up, he jumps into my arms because he's like, let me have him. Basically going to do loads of germinating in here because there's different tiers to it, which I thought was handy so I can pop all of my seeds, germinate the healthy ones, and it'll be safe to pop on the windowsill and I can see everything and it's, you know, it's not cling film over a little thing we did. And I think I'll use this so much. I'm actually probably going to do a little prepare and get some seeds germinating um, this evening because it happens so quickly as well. Um, I've got some other bits as well. I'll link that in the description box down below anyway. I saw these and they looked really, really nice. Um, the garden, these are some shears, some wooden shears, but they also had this like gold detailing to them, which I thought was quite nice. How to open them which I don't quite yet know how to do, but it has this wooden handle and I just thought that was very, very nice. So I'll link those down below as well. One of the other things that has arrived is for my car. This is a really, really lovely uh, leather bin for my car. So you essentially open it like that. It comes in loads of different colors. It does come in green, but I went for what was most complimentary for the interior of the car. Um, so there's this chocolate brown one and it's got bin liners so that's going to go into the car and just it's just so much easier to just put your rubbish in something like this and then pick it up by the handle take it out empty it this is definitely a hack from my dad that i learned oh these are my terracotta pots amazing oh my gosh they yes amazing so these are for germinating my pea shoots and keep them growing in the kitchen so that I can use them in um, dishes, essentially. Um, and you can get a lot of my pots are like this, but these are like little troughs and they come in a little trio or you can buy them individually, but I've, I've ordered their dishes that they lay in. They're like, so for when they, um, What's the word, like overspill? Yeah, the only thing is, is the dishes are out of stock, so I'm gonna need to try and get something to sit them on for now, because they've got the little drainage holes. Um, but yes, I thought doing a few little pea shoots in here would be really nice, and there's a little trio in there. And the bigger one, I'll probably use these ones in my greenhouse and keep the smaller ones for in here. I also have a dress as well, which I was searching for a really nice white crochet dress on Amazon. And it also, oh yeah. 40, not for you, my love, you can't wear it. I think that'll look very, very nice with my usual tan accessories, but also with my new blue blazer as well. I wanted something that was like a crochet, a little bit different, but yeah, good stuff. So I've got my little selection of seeds and I'm just figuring out how this works. It's actually quite complex. So you actually put water in the bottom and these little red things provide an airflow um, and allow moisture to kind of um, get through to the other little pan. Bless you! <laughs> to get through to the other pan. This is actually far more complex than I was um, anticipating and Mr. Millen Gordon has come to, to help. So, so, this is the base pan. Yep. And I put water in it, but I don't think you actually put water in the base pan, which is this one. Yep. Number two is the germination pan, the large pan of 20 centimetres diameter. This can be germinated. Oh, they look nice. Yeah, I got them from Amazon. Nice, aren't they? Is that a spare spring? I don't know because I can't get them to open. <laughs> so you just push that. That's Good, it. isn't it? So nice. That's the lock, and then you put. put, put whenever you unlock something, mm -hmm. always try pulling it inwards because often yeah, it releases. Yeah, it's just pushing against it. Yeah. Um, can I ask you a favour? 
that might be any more intense dream. No, it's not. It's just the same. Can I ask you a favour? Come on. Um, I left my wick, wicker basket of seeds in the um, greenhouse, and now I can't pick it up. I forget there might be a spider in it. Can you? Sometimes I wonder there? whether that's just an excuse. It's not. I so I'll come with you. Yeah. It definitely isn't an excuse. <laughs> I just said to Ali that it is almost evening walks around the garden weather. Whether it's mornings or evenings, it's almost that time of year where there's actually like new stuff to see every day. In fact, I think tomorrow we should do it, babe. I think that we should definitely do a walk around the garden. I've got a dog walk tomorrow. Let's do it. Anyway, let's get my seeds. Barkley. He moves like such a poppy. Porty watering the oak. Come on, Lummy. It's on the windowsill, yeah. <laughs> That's where they all start playing. Huh? Yeah. Playing together. <laughs> Barkley, you always get too excited and you schnoot her bottom. <laughs> Barkley doesn't know what to do with himself. <laughs> this is literally Barkley's personality. He just doesn't know. He's got no people skills. You've got no people skills. <laughs> You're crazy puppy. Now you have a bit of wood in your mouth. Look, they're playing together. <laughs> Barkley just looked at me like, mummy doesn't let us go in the uh, the flower bed, so I don't know why you're in there, Lumi. So it isn't as easy as I thought it was going to be, but I thought I think that I've actually solved it. So basically what happens is, is you pour water into the top, um, you pour, pour, walk, loop, you pour lukewarm water into the top tray and these little thingamajigs um, are supposed to drain the water. If they're not draining, I think you obviously have to move it around a little bit. Um, and it drains into the bottom one. Now you have to do that twice a day, so it is more maintenance, um, but it obviously means that your seeds are stacked um, like this, and obviously you wouldn't be able to do this with a uh, kitchen roll because it would stop the sun. So we're gonna give it a go. I'm gonna pour the lukewarm water now onto it, and we're gonna adjust it so that it's perfect, and then I can do that morning and night. I mean, I have to water plants anyway, so it's really not so bad. It is working its way through to the second one. As you can see here, it's pouring down. So I'm guessing when it covers this one, it will then pour down into the next one. So I've got pea shoots in here, which I will obviously plant for the window sills. Then I've got corn in here, and then I've got money maker tomatoes in here. And I'm guessing that these little stopcock thingies stop the seeds from being washed away but to be fair it's just going to be like watering a plant which is really not that difficult but now we wait i think i will leave this very riveting end to this video here <laughs> oh dear <laughs> but um i'll link everything in the description box down below so if you want to pick up your very own sprouter then you can it's just made it through to the third tier Ooh.